Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today's December 30th and uh, I'm in Mountain View, Hawaii. If you can't notice that I am outside here, it's actually raining a little bit. Good thing I'm underneath this canopy here in the back of this home I'm staying at. My in-laws out here, we do a family meet up here every single Christmas. So let's go ahead and dive into the forecast and I'll share some of what I did yesterday towards the, uh, out with the volcano, some images I got and what happened out there yesterday. And then I'll share uh, with you the latest on La Nina across the region. Of course, we'll look at the extended forecast here as well. But first things first is the North American Model 12Z hot off the presses. Put that into motion. You can see we're going to still have some of the snowfall across the Cascades. There's still some winter weather advisories that are up and some of those showers could linger through tomorrow morning. You can see the snow wrapping up for some of the Rocky Mountains here, Idaho, Panama, Western Montana, British Columbia. Also, before the next system, quickly coming in here as we go through the uh, Tuesday night period, so tomorrow night, and then you can see the next round of some mountain snows showing up there. And you notice some of this could start as some snowfall here uh, across some of eastern Washington and eastern Oregon into lower elevations, maybe even down towards I-90 here, a little bit higher amounts across Highway 2. And you can see that system swinging through as we go through the day Wednesday. And then there's another system back here out over the Pacific Ocean. And I'll start to show you that here now on the European. If I put that into motion, you can see the next system arriving as we go through the afternoon, evening on Tuesday, let's call it. And then that Wednesday morning snowfall potential. And it doesn't take much to make things slick. So that occur, could occur for Eastern Washington. And then we kind of get that precipitation continuing on as we go on in through the Thursday morning time period. Precipitation it doesn't give us much of a break here as we head on into Friday morning as well. Another storm system rolling in here with some mountain snows and then yet another weak system as we go through the weekend coming up. So we've had these persistent one system after another for over half a month now, over a couple of weeks, probably getting close to three weeks at this point. Now, if we take a look at this total snow couture ratio, I do want to point this out here on the North American model. Let me scroll through here. And we'll bring this on into Wednesday morning. You can see Eastern Washington. Check it out. Some of the lower elevations getting a little bit of measurable snow. I wouldn't put too much stock into this for Western Washington, but you could see some lower elevation snowflakes here. And it even wants to put a couple inches across Kitsap Peninsula. We'll have to watch that. That is for Tuesday night. So tomorrow morning, we'll take another look at this, but just kind of be aware that there could be some lower snow levels with this next system. But Eastern Washington, I-90, maybe some of Highway 2, getting a couple inches there as well. Now, looking at the soil temperatures, you can see why I'm not too concerned if anything did fall into lower elevations. We are still pretty warm at the surface, and the surface temperatures are not going to you know, support any kind of accumulating snowfall there across western Washington. Different story, though, across eastern Washington. You can see we're clearly in the lower 30s there, so you know, it could make things slick as we head off in towards Wednesday morning. But Wednesday morning, you see those temperatures aren't changing much. And again, western Washington, western Oregon, the soil temperatures are above normal. And if you see me moving around, here a little bit here i'm just making sure i don't have any mosquitoes on my legs now taking a look at the total 24 hour total snow could share ratio just kind of showing you we do have multiple rounds coming in here here so we go through thursday morning another good shot for the cascades of washington and then of course we have additional systems as we head off in towards the weekend period coming up here taking a look at the european artificial intelligence this is zero six z run so uh, again, you can see Gulf of Alaska is here. There's Washington State. You can see the Gulf of Alaska trough still churning some systems into the region all the way through Friday showing. And then we go through Saturday. And as some ridging starts to show up here as we go towards the early portion of next week. Gulf of Alaska trough is still going. How close will this system get up into southwest BC and uh, our western BC and southeast Alaska? And then you see the ridge kind of holding on there as we go on in through uh, the January 10th time frame. A small weak system kind of swings through there. We'll be watching that one as well. And then you can see ridging holding on. Are we going to actually get this pattern change this time? Or is it going to be like everything else through the extended forecast where it changes dramatically? But on the flip side of this ridge, look at this north and this northwest wind giving a cold air shot to eastern portions of the country. So we just kind of have to wait and bide our time to see if our turn is eventually going to come. And if we look at the extended forecast, I'll scroll up into the extended. We're scrolling day at a time. Now we're in towards January. 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, trying to see if we have any kind of sign in the future. And as we go towards mid-January, again, it does start to mix things up a bit. And it wants to hint it's some ridging out here over the Gulf of Alaska and maybe bring some chillier systems. But of course, purely grasping at straws, just purely entertainment purposes only. But this is the 46-day, 2-meter temperature anomaly. And you can kind of see the western USA. Maybe we'll eventually get our shot here at the cooler weather. Just no great sign of it yet. Now, a 6 to 10 day, 
six to ten day precipitation here it's still including the pacific northwest you can see california below normal above across the montana and wyoming we go to eight to 14 day big yin and yang west above east below and that's what i was showing you there with those 500 millibar heights clearly showing the trough there uh, dropping down across eastern portions you can see hawaii above and much of alaska above as well there's the 8 to 14 day precipitation as well. And uh, just a reminder, this was the uh, latest uh, Climate Prediction Center on uh, December 19th, seasonal temperature outlook for January, February, and March. So it does include us here in the below normal and the above average here. So La Nina is, it looks like it's it's coming here. And I'll show you that here starting right now. But look at the, the latest weekly departure. We're actually, that's actually moderate uh, La Nina territory. And you can see over here on the right, that's where we've kind of fallen off the cliff. The temperatures are dropping across the equatorial Pacific where we measure uh, the ENSO conditions. More on that here in a moment. But you can see the Hawaiian Islands are right there. There's Nino 3.4 and there's Australia and you can see Mexico over here. So again, across the equatorial Pacific, you can see the waters are cooler than normal. And what that tends to do is increase the trade winds here. And we allow the heat to build up across the maritime continent. And we suppress convection here across the equatorial Pacific. But that, uh, again, changes the jet stream downstream of the Pacific Northwest. So hopefully, eventually, at some point in January or February, who knows, we'll eventually get our turn at some more chilly weather here in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, this is the change in weekly sea surface temperature anomalies. You can clearly see the cooling there across the equatorial Pacific. So is La Nina finally coming into uh, effect now? That is what we are watching. And the CFS has been showing this drop, and it looks like that is actually occurring. We've been plummeting here over uh, the last week or two across the equatorial Pacific, as I mentioned. And you can kind of see that cooler tongue across the region there. If we take a look at the Southern Oscillation Index, it kind of gives you an idea if the atmosphere is responding to the La Nina conditions. And we are in positive, so we, it does have some type of La Nina flavor to it. And just a reminder that a lot of times the La Nina conditions do not kick in till after the new year. And we don't feel that sometimes until, you know, maybe even later January, February, you know, it can, it can be a while, you know, La Nina is no guarantee of heavy snowfall uh, anyway. But so if you're wondering what I was out there doing yesterday, I had a major equipment malfunction on some unstable terrain, trying to get out there and get some nice shots of the volcano. I took the brunt of that huge camera equipment on top of my head, and you can see all the blood that occurred. And a lot of it went straight to the ground, so it's kind of freaky. So I had to bail out of there pretty quickly. It stopped bleeding about halfway back on my long hike back to the car. Uh, it turns out that I'm okay. Uh, did a lot of cleaning up on it yesterday my hair was matted pretty good but that's what I was up to yesterday and then if we take a look at some shots that I got though it, it was probably worth it because it was just an amazing sight we had double fountains going up there was another cinder cone over here so just a truly amazing sight you could hear it sounds like Snoqualmie Falls the best um, descriptor I have for the sound it just sounded like a waterfall kind of often in the distance just amazing uh, the scene and uh, this is another shot of where I was as well. You can see some of the cliffs off to the left here. But yeah, it, this is probably going up over 120 feet. The right one and this one was probably up over 100 feet at times as well. It actually looks like it, it's about the same still going this morning on the live stream on the USGS YouTube page. But yeah, the, the channel's doing great. We're getting towards 92,000. I mean, it looks like 100,000 is becoming inevitable here. And hopefully we can get it this season. We'll see how that goes. And I can feel the rain falling on me now, kind of blowing sideways in here and getting in on me. But yeah, uh, nice and warm. It should be in the 70s here today. But um, anyway, we'll just continue to break this down day by day. We'll continue to see what has come. Hope you guys are having a good day otherwise, and I will talk to you guys later.